Project Zero. That's the codename Samsung used for the Galaxy S6, and after spending a couple hours with it last week, I've got to say, this is the biggest upgrade to the Galaxy line yet. The biggest change is with the design. Gone are the days of plastic and fake chrome, and in is an all glass and metal build. It definitely shares some DNA with the iPhone, with a band of aluminum sandwiching two sheets of Gorilla Glass 4 on front and back, but it's the best kind of inspiration. The glass feels grippy in the hand and allows for some awesome looking color shifting depending on the light. While you do lose the removable back and waterproofing, instead what you get is a phone that finally looks and feels premium. Another big addition is a second model, the Galaxy S6 Edge. This is completely identical to the normal phone, but it curves both edges of the display. Unlike the half-baked Note 4 Edge, this gives you easy access to swiping in from both sides with a slight but noticeable wraparound effect. It's hard to get across on video, but after years of staring at flat screens, even a minor curve goes a long way in giving the illusion of the screen flowing around the phone. Couple that with thinner and more comfortable bezels, and I'm surprised Samsung bothered with a normal Galaxy S6 at all. As far as phones go, the GS6 is a spec monster. Inside, it's using an 8-core Samsung Exynos system on a chip, one of the first SoCs based on the new 14 nanometer process. Paired with 3GB of RAM, this is as powerful as it gets right now, and while benchmarks will have to come a bit later, I couldn't get the phone to lag or stutter at all in my time with the device. It's also got a 5.1 Quad HD display with a whopping resolution of 2560 by 1440, putting it at a slightly ridiculous 577 pixels per inch. At this point, I think we're hitting the point of diminishing returns, but there's no doubting that this is a very, very nice looking screen. Wireless charging is also now built in, which is nice with the added benefit of supporting both Qi and PowerMat, meaning this should work with basically any wireless charging system out there. Samsung Pay. Not the most creative of names, but this is Samsung's take on mobile payments. This works alongside the fingerprint reader in the home button to authenticate, which thankfully now works by tapping instead of swiping, bringing it right in line with Touch ID on the iPhone. Just like you would imagine, this works with NFC, but there's one major advantage, the ability to use it with normal magnetic stripe readers. Samsung Pay won't be up and running for launch, but according to Samsung, it will work similarly to normal NFC payments by holding the phone against the credit card reader, which should work on roughly 90% of systems. Where Project Zero was needed the most is on the software side, and here TouchWiz has finally been tamed. Samsung has slashed the amount of preloaded apps they include to a minimum and replaced them with some actually useful options like Microsoft OneDrive and Skype. The skin has been brought closer to stock Android and thankfully it's running the latest 5.0 Lollipop update. It might not be quite as clean as a Nexus, but compared to earlier Galaxy models, it's like night and day. So what do you guys think about the Galaxy S6? Let me know in the comments below, and if you want the other side of this video, check out my buddy John from TLD, where he goes over what you need to know before getting the GS6.